All right, so welcome to the finals of Accelerate. Accelerate is a one-part CTF, one-part video game speedrun challenge that we came up with. It's a little bit experimental, but uh, we had it last week, and last week was a lot of fun. We've given teams 30 minutes ahead of time to take the source code, um, check out to see you know what the game involves, and then the teams will start in about five minutes uh, to see who can get to the exit the fastest. Um, here's Julian to tell us a little bit about the teams that are going to be competing today. So the team that we have today actually won the qualifications that happened last weekend with, between 16 teams. And today we have the four winners, namely the PPP, played Parliament of Pwning from the US, who are known to win the DEFCON CTF on a regular basis. We've got Passen from Israel. We've got the Flat Network Society, which is a mostly French, but also a big Polish team. And also Ayus Bing from Japan and South Korea. So tell me, David, what are we what are we going to witness this time? So what I saw last week uh, when I was commentating on Saturday with a PPP match, um, I saw some people do some pretty interesting things. The things I saw was I saw that there was a speed run hack that we didn't intend. So that was a lot of fun uh, when that was happening. Um, there was also somebody who was doing pathfinding via AI. Um, again, part of the fun is kind of seeing what the commentators uh, come up with to interpret what they're seeing. What did you see? Yeah, amusingly, we were expecting some speedrun to happen, but not the way it was implemented. So they had a uber speedrun, like really fast. They were expecting like a slowish one twenty percent. Um, we had also, I really like this. They changed the art in the game. For example, the more smoky chicken had a chicken for the character. The flat network society put a fancy hat on top of the character and a training flat with the logo. And also, as soon as they complete the challenges, there was like a disco mode with the logo snowing all around the level's background. It was really fun. Yeah, one of the things that I saw that I thought was entertaining that I wouldn't have thought of was the custom zoom levels on the game. So when they were moving around the level, right, um, it really wasn't the game that you intend, right? So if you had anything where you were going to hack it based on the viewport, uh, that wouldn't have worked, right? So That was really unexpected, yeah. Let's turn out to the commentator so they can introduce themselves and can watch the game with them. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is uh, Carl and I'm here together with uh, Hilner to uh, commentate this match. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting match tonight, tonight I think. Uh, we, we've seen uh, some pretty impressive uh, work in the previous weekend. And uh, they, the teams have now had some time to work on their tooling. So I'm very excited to see... Uh, what level of hacking we're going to see tonight. Yeah, and now the countdown has started and even uh, dropped to zero. So actually the game uh, servers uh, have opened. So uh, as the uh, our panelists described, the, the, the participant teams, they have been given uh, some opportunity to uh, look at the game uh, before it started. And now the actual real game servers have opened and they can log into the game. Uh, to, to, to actually start grabbing those uh, flags and solving these challenges. So this is going to be really exciting. Yeah, as we said, these are some of the best uh, best CTF teams in the world. And uh, of course, they have no experience uh, or minimal experience now with uh, speedrunning and, and game hacking. So uh, it's, interesting to, it's interesting to see them in this uh, new environment. Yeah, definitely. Um, so as we as we saw from the the matches um, uh, last week, the qualification rounds, these teams they were developing, you know, different tooling and stuff to be able to um, utilize uh, bugs and and you know get a better way of like uh, moving around in the game and so on. Uh, and it's going to be really interesting to see what changes and improvements they've made to their tooling uh, during this uh, week. Yeah, and especially um, they they discovered some bugs uh, in the in the last weekend. So I, I think they've uh, I think some of the teams have discovered even more bugs in the in the week in the preparation week that they had. Uh, for example, I see some of the teams uh, with uh, newly found speed hacks where they're uh, actually making the client uh, emulate more ticks than it should. Yeah, that's really interesting. And we can actually, let's, you know, take a round and look at, look at the different teams and their screens and what's going on. Um, so uh, first out, we have the team I use Bing. And we can see here that 
they uh, what happened there on their screen, apart from the you know slight uh, video uh, issues, they are accessing one of these game consoles in game, and this is one of the ways you access the different challenges. So here they have a what looks like a tic tac toe uh, game uh, that they will uh, have to play. So they have downloaded the uh, the program, and then they can actually interact with this console to 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 play this tic tac toe game. And I guess they have to somehow um, you know they have to somehow. Uh, hack this game to be able to to beat the computer and uh, get the flag absolutely and you can see them hammering away at this game yeah. uh to no avail it seems like but it's going to be interesting to see how they how they decide to tackle this whether it be uh through uh through just uh typing away at the keyboard or, or with scripting because you can see a lot of um debug information on their screen right now they they have a lot of tooling yeah, it's interesting. We can see that they are drawing like the collisions on these green things, and they have some kind of like info panel with some commands and stuff to the in the bottom right there, which looks really interesting. Um, yeah, I wonder what's what's gonna happen there. Uh, but uh, let's move on to to our next uh, team, uh, PPP, and uh, look what they are up to. Uh, we can see here as well some different like status panels and. Uh, uh, oh, they even have like a spreadsheet with like different subtasks, and they it has a column said auto router. That looks really nice, I think. That's really cool. That's it. Do you think this is like auto generated? Like, how how did they figure out? I guess it, they had thirty minutes to figure it out, right? Yeah, I think uh, I, I I would guess that uh, the their strategy has have been to. Uh, during these 30 minutes, they have explored uh, the map and they have looked at the different entities across the map and tried to like map out this in a spreadsheet uh, to like say, okay, we know that we will need to access this console and this console and open this door and pick up this item and so on. And they have defined these uh, subtasks. And then I guess there's, you know, trying to get some kind of uh, uh, task management. And it looked like maybe they even have some way of like, uh, you know, doing pathfinding. We can see some interesting stuff uh, yeah. in circles. Can we just take a moment to appreciate their client here? Because not only like is it useful, but also it looks really cool. Right. And it seems like they 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 definitely have a custom client here with uh, custom zoom levels, which is very very useful. And you can actually see them when they run. They run really fast, and they're even clicking. And what are they doing? Yeah, I, I wonder if these um, the, the, all these circles that are appearing uh, that we saw before, I wonder if that was some kind of pathing thing where it says, you know, where uh, where they're supposed to move. Uh, looks pretty advanced, I would say. But uh, I guess... So they, they changed the platforming game into a, a, like a point and click game, it seems like. That's nice. I mean, I'm a big fan of point and click adventures, so, you know, I don't mind. Um but uh, that's fairly impressive. Yeah, let's switch over to uh, Paston. And uh, as a Swede, I really appreciate the color scheme here, uh, the blue and yellow. Um, Beautiful. And it's the bra. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> And what we can see here is as well, you know, some custom rendering, uh, some admin uh, panel thing uh, on the left hand side of, of, of the screen uh, looks similar to what they had in their uh, first match, but it's really nicely styled, including, for example, if you look at the bottom of their panel, they have the kill command, uh, which can be proved to be useful. And it has these small skulls uh, on, the, on the edges and stuff. Um, it also looks like this. I'm really interested by this uh, little frame in the top left. Uh, do you have an idea what this is? I think it's just the zoom level. So, so the, the the big screen is just the zoomed out version, and then you have the actual in-game uh, view of how it actually looks like. All right. Um, my guess. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty smart. Like, if you want to get you want to get the high level perspective, but you still maybe need to do some precision uh, platforming or you know something like that. Absolutely. And now you can actually see that the Pastan is uh, struggling here on this jump uh, because you cannot actually make that jump. That jump is too too high to make it on your own. So the teams have to figure out the way to get up to the, the terminal up there um, and somehow make that jump. Oh, so this is... Or, is or it, find a different way. It's a trick, uh, looks like. So 
this is this is very nice because we we, we should explain this at, at least we saw in the uh qualification match that uh Paston had this thing where they could just click uh on a location on the screen and uh, their uh, their system would like figure out uh, the correct movements and just move there uh, on its own and they seem to be very confused now by the fact that they're clicking on top of that platform but their but their bot is just saying no uh so I guess there's, yeah, there's no way pa no, no no way to pass up there. No. So now they're figuring out different uh, ways to get there. Yes. And can we take a moment to appreciate the nice background they have here? It's some like you know Halloween uh, themed uh, background with the with the Paston logo integrated in the background. That's that's really nice. Dedication right there. Yeah. Well, uh, let's. Uh, well, I would just leave them with the, the final comment here is that if if I were in the in in their shoes, uh, you know, if, if that happened, I would think that I had a bug in my bot. Like if it's trying, if I'm clicking there and it's saying like, you know, you can't do this jump, I would say, you know, no, that can't be possible. Surely this, you know, you must be able to make this jump. Uh, so yeah, yeah, they're very confused. It seems like like yeah. they keep clicking and nothing's happening. And you can see on their on their uh, on their little debug menu it says bot, and they even have like speed hacks version two, meaning that they're they're on the second version of their speed hack. Yeah, uh, we can explain a little bit more about that, but let's first look into what the Flat Network Society, our fourth uh, finalist team, are doing. And uh, you can see they are inside the uh, what do we call this? Like the the this, the labyrinth uh, or something, which is uh maze it's called maze I oh think. yes and skyloft maze yes and the thing here right is that uh, visually it looks like just one big one big block but some of these block blocks have collisions and some of them don't so it's like a, a, a maze but you have to have some way of uh, being being able to see which uh, which blocks have collision or not, and there's even I think a little bit uh, a little bit of trickery going on uh, to make it a little bit more difficult to understand which of these actually. And yeah, so we have some action from from the first team. So we have um, first blood from uh, PPP. Yes, let's see. They have a flag here which they got from the door challenge and uh, they scored this uh, challenge so that's good we have the first the first the first flag down and uh, yeah so let's look at past and it seems like there's some exciting developments yes uh, so past seem to be they seem also to be moving for the door they are e actually there and now they so let's talk about this challenge here um so this this uh, challenge is located in the broken passage and the the trick here and as you see see they they've just uh, just solved it uh there's an issue with uh, the amount of entities you can render in the game at any given moment and of course a door is nothing but an entity uh, such that if you generate enough entities and you try to toggle uh, toggle the doors. If you have extended the uh, the limit, which is sixty four, then the door cannot actually spawn, and you can actually go go through and get the flag. So that was that was really interesting. So we have we have two teams who have solved that. That is Pastin and PPP. Yeah, no, that's that's really cool. Um, and uh, this is actually an interesting difference in this match uh, compared to uh, well we will we will see how it develops but in the in the first few matches we saw like a big spread on what challenges the teams went for um at first but uh, here we've seen the two the two first flags scored in the game are both from the same challenge and we'll see what the other teams will be doing if they will be going for that flag or for something else oh here we see another flag uh, going uh, going on, and this is the uh, the sky maze, right? This is the skyloft maze, correct? Right. So you can see here on on past the screen is that uh, not all the tiles are black like initially. Uh, that is because um, those, those some of those tiles do not have collision, um, and the way you figure that out is um, they have different types, and they need to uh, actually modify their client. To render the different tile types, such that they they render differently, such that they can move throughout the maze. But it seems like uh, 
uh, we, we got to solve uh, from IU spin on that, that challenge. Oh, so yeah, let's uh, switch over to them. Um, Bing was wait. They they haven't haven't got the got the flag yet, or uh, they just haven't submitted it. No, uh, actually, while we were just talking, we had a already a third flag from uh, PPP. And I'm actually not quite sure which uh, one that was. So maybe if we could get some, some. Okay, so it seems that PPP solved the the maze as well, uh, just like uh, Paston did, uh, and they also solved uh, the platforms. And uh, yeah, uh, Hilner, maybe you could just uh, talk a little bit about that. What's going on with that so that, that's the challenge where uh, we saw past and earlier trying to click with their with their bot and that their bot would not move up to the platform no matter what they try so the gap is actually way too big for the player to be able to jump that and there's nothing they can do about it but what they can do is find a different path towards that platform and that is actually from the above so if you if you uh, go to the um, skyloft maze you can actually find the path in the maze that is going to drop you down to the uh, the tricky platforms and you can actually fall out of bounds and there is actually a death zone um, uh, right above there uh, so if you navigate left of the death zone you can actually make it to the top of the tricky platforms and it, and it seems like we, we got us all from from ppp on that one which is really 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 cool nice um Awesome. We got another solve from uh, I, I use Bing uh, as well. These are just uh, raining in, and you can see now uh, from these indicators that uh, they have also uh, solved both the uh, uh, the, the scale of the maze, right, and the uh, uh, and the platform. No, sorry, yeah, the doors. The platforms, yeah. Wait, did they get the platforms or no? No, it was the doors, right? And now the doors, they... absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's um, so we have uh, PPP at three and we have Bing and Paston at two solves each and Flat Network Society. Let's check in with them. They are yet to score, but uh, let's see. They have here a terminal and they get a flag. So uh, they also get the mace right now. Uh, it's good. So that's a, it's a flag for the maze and for the for the flat network society. Yeah. Access granted. Nice. So that that's uh, the first flag that the uh, flat flat network society gets. So that puts them on the board. Um. Yeah, that's uh, really nice to see. Uh, again, uh, as we said, a much more uh, you know. Uh, clustered a way of uh, getting the flags from the different teams now. We have uh, seen all the teams going for some subset of these three challenges. And it looks like they're doing a respawn uh, thing here as well. Uh, let's see if uh, if this works and then we will explain what's going on. Uh, it didn't seem like it worked. So uh, in this game, you can die. And when you die, you will respawn at the closest respawn point. And you can see, so uh, yeah, so here they accessed another terminal uh, with another challenge. They have a Python uh, script that they can download. But uh, just to finish the point, you see the respawn point on their screen as well. So when you die, you will respawn at the closest uh, respawn point. So in the qualification rounds, there was uh, um, a challenge where you had to abuse this to respawn at uh, a location which was not actually possible to reach by other means. Um, yeah so and it seems like they they actually learned from that weekend and have added to their tooling um the different different colored regions and they mapped out where the respawn point actually is so that makes it very easy to uh, to abuse uh, respawn bugs yeah and um we see up here in the corner uh i use bing uh, we could see that they were going pretty fast uh which is of course, uh, helpful uh, if you're in a race, and we could maybe explain a little bit about the difference between, uh, you know, the, the speed hacks that we saw in the uh, 
uh, qualification rounds and then here in the finals. So in the original version of the game, uh, you could you could basically send these ticks uh, to the server, these game ticks, and uh, uh, the the idea was that you could basically send them faster to the server to to get this game to run faster. It was supposed to be a limit on that, but due to a bug, it was bas basically unlimited, so you can run the, run the game at any speed you wanted. Uh, for this time, we have fixed it, but there is a way to kind of um, gather like collect. Uh, pending ticks so by slowing down your game and sending fewer ticks in during moments when you're not doing anything useful uh you can get then kind of like catch up by sending a burst of ticks faster after that so in that sense like on average your game cannot run faster but you can control the speed of the game uh locally in time and we can see a couple of teams uh, have actually uh, rendered out like a turbo meter yeah uh to to see uh that, that they can use turbos whenever they need them which is fascinating yeah and it's uh interesting to see uh we see here from ppp and they seem to have some issues with this challenge hopefully our uh you know staff is uh, looking into that so they will have that sorted at any time or maybe they are do, doing something wrong we don't know but uh, you know hopefully it shouldn't be too big an issue um yeah so what challenge are they working on it seems like it's uh yeah so it's the uh the the guest accelerate so the user is supposed to input uh a string and of course they don't know what that string is it, it of course is the flag but the script will tell you, first of all, if the length is correct. So of course you can brute force how long the flag should be. And then you can see uh, the Flat Network Society has actually figured out the length of the flag. And now they can actually start figuring out character by character, which one is correct. And you can see how, how, uh, how the output, how the script is showing you when you get a, get a correct character uh, correct. But in order to brute force it, um we would not suggest doing it by hand so of course scripting is highly encouraged so we'll, we're, we're gonna see how the teams decide to tackle that yeah so it's a little bit like some kind of mastermind uh, style game i guess but but with a much larger uh, search uh, space um so it's gonna be interesting to see how they how they tackle that absolutely so Let's switch over to I use Bing and I see these, I really like all these like lines going across the screen. I think they are indicating where the portals are leading and also which consoles belong to which flag terminal. Um, Seems like it. Although it looks very confusing, I'm not sure how it's helping them, but uh more the power more more power to them uh it's cool it's cool it looks cool yeah and um also a small uh, detail which uh you know viewers of the first few rounds might have noticed is that we have introduced a uh, team specific uh color schemes for the main character uh based on uh, the team's uh, logos so uh, it's, I guess, more or less visible in the, for the different teams. But yeah, basically we have these different color schemes for, for, uh, for the character in the game. Uh, and I think some of them even have custom characters. Uh, uh, I think, um, the, uh, either Pastin or someone has uh, a custom, custom character. That'll be fun to see. Right. Oh, there is another flag there for, uh, for PPP. And I was, so that that... was for guest accelerate. Yeah, or I think so. That was impressive how fast they managed to do that. So yeah. okay, so they decided to download the uh, the file and work work on it offline instead of doing it in the terminal. Yeah, that's that's very reasonable and uh... very PPP of them. They should call themselves Parallel Pony because there are so many members. <laughs> yeah, and you see, and you see those meters there uh, at the bottom. This it says like player ahead of server, 
and a head of player. Uh, so this is, I guess, the way they do this, like saving up ticks and doing using this for boosting later as well. So they call it the bank. Oh, this is funny. Nice. Just stash up on those ticks. Yeah, put put those ticks on the bank. Storm, keep them for later. Yeah. Uh, we can see some nice platforming going on here for the flat network uh, society. And they have activated their party mode, but now they turned it off. I it's... like the party modes. I, I really enjoy the customization that the teams have put into this. It shows the uh, commitment that they, they, they put into making a good show, which I admire. Yes. But this looks like the... This looks like the match from... Or have we reused some areas from the... We did reuse some areas, correct, okay, right. but cool. we, did we did customize it a bit. I see, I see. So, uh, because I was recognizing that area uh, from the uh, qualification uh, rounds this with these uh, platforms and the small platforms and the large chunks and stuff that they were jumping around on. Uh, but, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, I mean, it was an area I liked, so, you know, it's good that we used that as well. I think that area is uh, the Green Pines. Mm, that's, that's nice. Um, yeah, so we... The Bing team was up in that tower, um, right? But I just, unfortunately, just missed it. And uh, yeah, so not sure what happened there exactly. Uh, I'm not, not sure either what they are doing at the moment. Um. It seems like they they might be just be working on challenges, um, mm. solving yeah. uh, maybe the the guess, guessable one. Yeah. Guess accelerate. Guess accelerate. So so get can we get a a brief uh, scoreboard update? So I, I think it's uh, PPP is in first place with three flags. Yeah, four flags even. Actually, four uh, flags, impressive. Yes. So we got PP with four flags. Uh, then we got pa Pastin in second with two flags, uh, along with IOS Bing, who also has has two flags. And then we have uh, the Flat Network Society in the Thailand with uh, with one flag. Okay, that's good. Uh, and Pastin seems to have gotten their third flag. Yeah, we just seem to be having a hard time keeping up with these uh, flags, uh, you know, coming in left and right, uh, but. What did they just get? They got another challenge, which has not been solved by any of the other teams. So that's uh, very nice. Um, so that Seems might- like they've got first blood on- It's either it's in. either the make file crack me or the, yeah, it's the Python optimize me challenge. So they have, they received a, a Python bytecode uh, thing. And this uh, code will um, essentially uh, print the flag or calculate what you need to get the flag, but it's it's like horribly inefficient. So it will uh, basically never finish in time. So what you have to do is you have to understand what the code is doing and optimize uh, the code uh, so that you know it will run much faster and then finish in about like two minutes uh, or so, and then yeah, you will you will be able to get the flag. Yeah, that's a really interesting challenge that you have an inefficient code that will give you the answer given some amount of time, but it's not within the uh, the limits of the competition, so we have to speed it up. But it seems like the Flat Network Society got themselves their second flag. Yes, and this is the third uh, like CTF uh, challenge, uh, or sorry, the um, yeah the uh, other one which no one else has solved yet either. And this is, is it the make file uh, that they sold? I so think that was they they got get, get celebrate actually. Oh, they through get... through just in game interactions, which is impressive, because I would have assumed they need some scripting. Yeah. So that's really cool. You have it's actually if we if we bring up the scoreboard view. Uh, it's a very nice observation here. You see that uh, all the teams finished uh, one of the in-game uh, 
uh, challenges. Uh, I think that's the maze one, right? Uh, and then you, when you look at these um, in-game CTF challenges, you see that we have three teams all helping solve uh, one uh, different uh, challenge each. So now we're, we're starting to see the spread that we were talking about previously. Yeah, absolutely. And it also seems like some of the teams are finding uh, bugs we actually left in from previous matches. So in match number three, you could actually pick up terminals and you can actually use that um, bug to go through doors and more. Yes. And it seems like um, uh, we have the Flat, flat Network Society abusing that bug, which is fun. Yeah, and we can just see here that PPP seem to just uh, have finished the uh, uh, guest accelerate challenge as well. I, I saw the like uh, input or sorry the different uh, flag combinations uh, running across the screen, and I saw it finishing. So uh, hopefully that is um, you know the flag uh, coming, uh, and that would bring them up to a score of five uh, flags, which is it's really imp impressive. It's impressive how fast they're they're like stacking these these flags up it's it really shows you how how good tooling can uh like send you uh send you above and beyond the competition mm, right uh, we have actually as uh, looks like we have another flag field coming up here and the doors challenge uh solved by i use bing uh, which is uh, again this uh, thing where you uh, maximize the number of entities that can be spawned and then when you try to do this door flipping thing the door which is supposed to be closed it will not actually spawn because there are too many entities so you can just walk straight through get grab the flag and submit it um, Absolutely. Yeah. and it se seems like uh, yeah i use being to spawn the bunch of bombs fill up the entity slot and then they can yeah get right through that door that's good and we did in fact see here that PPP did get the uh, uh, guest accelerate uh, flag and scored their fifth uh, flag. So very impressive uh, of them. So they did not do this by interacting with the game. Rather, they they you, you can see the 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 Python terminal there where they actually scripted it, which is yeah lame but smart. <laughs> yes, and. So it looks like they're actually looking to submit yet another flag. This is crazy. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's really, really, really fast uh, progress of them. We'll see if they actually uh, get the flag. Uh, we'll give it a few seconds or maybe they're just, you know, hanging out here, here um, waiting for, for one of their teammates to, to solve the flag. But just to note here, they they have two flags yet to uh, yet to obtain, which is within the first thirty ma ma minutes of the match is impressive, very impressive. Um, yeah, let's uh, you know switch back to Paston while we wait for that flag being submitted. Um, this looks like they're doing the guest accelerate thing, right? Absolutely, and they they've gone with a scripting route, which is, uh, of course, the optimal route. But they are some somehow. I'm not sure how they hooked this up. Yeah, it looks like they're kind of like integrating or like scripting and then inserting this directory directly into the console, in the game, which is, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I think we've seen a lot of interesting different variants of this. Uh, I heard something about PPP having like pwn tools directly integrated into. Uh, the consoles uh, in the game, um, which is cool. That, that's really fun. Yeah. But... The amount of dedication some of these teams put into the tooling yeah. uh, is 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 really really fun. Yeah. So um, checking in with the Flat Network Society here again. Some speed boosting. They have so. So the Flat Network Society still has not figured out the uh, the max entities or how to get through that door. So they're playing around with the bombs here. And in previous matches, um, there were different ways to bypass these doors with the bombs. Um, 
So it seems like they're, they're maybe going that route instead of spawning a bunch of entities and trying to toggle. Yeah. So it seems that uh, while we were looking away, uh, Paston uh, did score uh, another challenge, which brought them up to four flags uh, completed. They did the make file uh, flag, which uh, one other team had did, done before, I think. So the PPP, I yeah, think, yeah, exactly. So the make file is an interesting, like uh, it's a crack me implemented as a make file. Um, I wonder if we could get that on our uh, observer screen uh, at some point uh, to, to see what, you know, how horrible something like that could look. And uh, yeah. A make file crack me, who, who would have thought? Yeah, no. Oh, I actually want to check in here with um, this. Yeah, you can see there PPP had their nice little spreadsheet with the different um, challenges and uh, maybe some like notes and subtasks related to that. And uh, yeah, it's really, really crucial with the proper uh, team management. We also see them uh, dropping in another flag here, bringing them up to six flags, just like the uh, amusement park. Absolutely. And uh, you, you can see the organization, their project planning and the, the, the size of the team is really, really paying off for them. Mm. But, but it sounds like that we have the Makefile Crack Me ready um, in the Observer view, if we can check that out. Oh, awesome. So switching over to the Observer view now to look at this beauty. And yeah, it's... Uh, I, it's not very legible. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't write make files, you know, anyway, but you know, this is, this is just messy. Uh. Yeah, so the, the goal here is to, is to somehow reverse engineer this, figure out what exactly is this make file doing, um, and then uh, try to actually extract the flag from this. Yeah. So an interesting challenge and uh, we can check in with, uh, okay, Flat Network Society seems to have some issues. Did they crash the server maybe? Uh, so yeah, hopefully we can get on fixing that as quickly as possible to not, you know, cost them too much time. Uh, yeah, they're, they're already uh, they're already in, in fourth place, so this is this is not good for them. Yeah, no, that's very um, very unfortunate. Um, but you know, let's not not uh, you know look at that uh, going on. Let 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 us that have that fixed, and instead look at the I use Bing, and they have something like terminal relay window here. Oh, look at this! So it seems like they wrote their own Chrome app to interact with uh, terminal. So they have a a slightly more convenient way to interact with challenges. Mm. Very interesting. Unfortunately, it says terminal not a relay not connected. So I wonder if that's on purpose or if they are having some kind of technical issues. That would be very unfortunate in such a hectic moment like this. But it seems like it's working. I think it's a graphical issue. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Uh, did we just also see Paston scoring another flag here. Yes, I think we did. So they got their fifth flag, it seems like. Yes, and this means that if we bring up the scoreboard to clarify this, we can see that both Paston and PPP uh, have solved uh, the same uh, in-game CPF challenges. And they're missing, I think they're both missing the binary, um, the, the tic-tac-toe game, if I'm uh, correct. Yeah. And the uh, tic-tac-toe game is uh, by far the most difficult one. So we, we expected it to be solved last. Yeah. But it was one of the first uh, challenges the teams encountered. Yeah. Um, and then they, all, they both solved the maze and the doors, but uh, PPP did solve the platforms, right? Which Paston has not solved. Uh, yes. But this should not be too big of an issue for Paston because if they have one teammate working on the binary, um, the Ponable, then another player should be able to uh, figure out the platforming stuff in the meanwhile uh, without that being like an issue. So, you know, 
uh, definitely, definitely opportunity to, to catch up here. Um, but let's check in with PPP and their reversing efforts. What's going on? You can see we're deep into IDA here. Yeah. Um, you know, as we like, this is uh, where where we the happy place basically. This this is what we, we, we've been waiting for this whole uh, whole match. <laughs> yeah, and you can see they're reversing this game. You have some score print out there, some calling some round function in some kind of loop, um, and you can read some function names there. Uh, the the binary is not stripped, so. Uh, there are function names in there, uh, like uh, it's, it says like read string and dump file and dump board and who wins and so on. And basically this challenge is a, uh, it's a pretty standard uh, binary exploitation challenge of Pwnable as, as we call it in the CTF uh, world. And uh, it's basically a tic-tac-toe game, but there is an overflow uh, issue uh, and due to how it's set up so uh, they have they have a, it's a stack buffer overflow but there is a stack cookie but it's a forking binary so you can brute force uh the cookie uh you know one byte at a time uh, due to the forking nature and then you can do this to basically create a very small rock chain uh to print out the flag which is in memory uh, of the program so um, yeah this is a fun one and uh it's it's very graphical but it should be a fairly fairly simple stack based buffer overflow with a simple stack canary canary uh, uh, brute force. So it shouldn't be too difficult for them, um, especially an experienced team, to uh, to pull off this exploit in, in no time. Yeah. And uh, you know, speaking of exploits, um, let's look at what's going on here with all these A's. Oh, it seems they're doing the guess accelerate, I guess, because. They are trying to determine the length here as the first step. And it looks like uh, they're also taking the buffer overflow exploit uh, um, method here, but... <laughs> yeah. We'll see what it looks like, actually, when... Uh, because they're getting close to the, uh, the correct uh, length here. Uh, but now they... Did they stop? Seems like they're 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 copying over like from like a text file or something. Yeah. Instead of just entering more A's. Uh, yeah, maybe it's just to be you know very precise and not uh, make a mistake on on you know the number of. Oh, look here. You see here that uh, they put a certain uh, number of A's and it no longer said invalid length, and then just to double check they put in an extra character and they got an invalid length so they didn't know they know that it's not shorter and not longer but exactly this um, absolutely and now it's going to be fascinating to figure out uh how they how they approach mm. the character by character brute force yeah a little screenshot for the team there yeah um so i think this is interesting so Paston is now looking at oh yes So Paston did figure out how to get to the platform, uh, but now they, okay, so they going, they need to go around and then can they jump yeah, up there? So they need to jump out of bounds and then jump back in bounds. Yeah, so as we said before, you have to go to the maze thing, drop down, and then there's a kill plane, but you can, if you just keep going left, you can avoid the kill plane and go below it and then you turn right in again. So they got this uh, flag now, and uh, now they are turning turning it in. We'll see it being turned in. Yes, this means yeah, that we have six flag. Oh yes, uh, this is Oof. so very exciting here. Uh, with both Paston and PPP having collected the exact same set of six flags, both having the binary exploitation challenge remaining. And yeah, I, I don't know who, 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 who will take this. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's fairly uh, fair at this point to say that it's either going to be PPP or Paston uh, taking this finals. Absolutely. But it's going to be a close call because as we've seen, the PPP is, is a strong team in Ponobolt, Um and they have a lot of players, but Paston is also right on their heels. So they're definitely making them run for their money. Yeah. So we see uh, Paston and Six Flags, 
he'd be on six flags. Then we have uh, iOS being in third place with three flags, and then the flat network, network society with two flags. So let's see how how this wraps up. It seems like we're gonna have a have a quicker game than usual. Yeah. I mean, this is, of course, very difficult to balance this kind of game because you have these, you know, top level hackers and they have this tooling prepared. But at the same time, you know, you don't want to make a, a too difficult challenge, which just stalls uh, the game completely. Uh, we are now 42 minutes into like the live portion of the game. So that that is in addition to the 35 uh, ish minutes the teams had before to investigate uh the uh the, the level and the updated stuff but, but i think this might be the closest match um in hackcelerate actually yes it seems like pvp and past and are both waiting for the last flag yeah um making it very very close and here it's really interesting because what you're seeing now is not the split screen of the four different teams this is a split screen of ppp so you have four different ppp players uh being shown at the same uh, time to... And interesting to note, uh, in, the, in their qualification match, they had up to nine screens uh, being presented on the stream, which was uh, really, really fun. And it shows you how many players they actually have. Yeah, that's... Uh, it's very... And cool. just to, to talk a little bit about what is at stake here. So uh, we have um, fourth place is going to get about 500 US dollars. Uh, third place uh, will get one thousand dollars. Second place is gonna get two thousand dollars, and then first place is gonna get three thousand dollars. So the, this is um, these are some big stakes for these these companies, uh, the, these these teams here, not companies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's gonna be exciting to see which team past and PV is gonna take home the three K. Yeah, no, it's definitely like uh, that's some good, uh, that's some decent money into your like uh, team stash, uh, uh, you know, that you can, you know, use for either, you know, equipment for the team or maybe for going to on site uh, uh, competitions or maybe just throwing a party uh, for your team to celebrate uh, the victory. And uh, it looks like P PPP is uh, PPP is known for hosting great after parties in Vegas, so uh, that's probably going in the DevCon fund for next year. <laughs> oh yeah, hopefully there'll be. We have another flag coming in for uh, Make Crack Me is a weird flex. Uh, access denied. So there was something slightly off with the flag, I guess. Uh, maybe they didn't did a mistake. Uh, Might be capitalization as well. Yeah. Hopefully that's that's not uh, an issue here, and uh, you know we'll we'll hopefully that will be sorted out and hopefully they will get this that flag because it looked like they were you know really really onto it. Um, yeah, but but it's really funny seeing the flat flat network society at the top of their screen. You can see turbo fast nitro speed, and you can see they've accumulated almost a hundred seconds in turbo speed, as you can see they're using right now. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but actually, uh, turbo fast nitro speed is DFNS, which is the same um, abbreviation as the, the flat network society. So that's uh, really creative on their end. Yeah, no, it's it's really fun to see, uh, as we've talked about before, that you know these teams they have not only made tools that are useful, they have made tools which are beautiful, and they've also done other cosmetic changes, which are you know nothing that actually uh, gains them anything, but just adds to you know the experience here, which we we highly appreciate. And we can see that I use Bing also scored a flag here, and if we take a quick look at the scoreboard again that means that we now have two challenges uh, which have been solved by all of the teams um, and then one challenge which uh, is not solved yet by any team it's getting close now here in the uh, middle of the match so it looks like we have the flat network society going for the door thing is that stem spawning like a whole bunch that, of bombs or that's that's the, the, them filling up the entity uh buffer such that doors get oh they accidentally exploded some so the trick here is actually grabbing the the bombs and not exploding them 
Uh, but once you fill up the entity, uh, entity buffer, you should just be able to go up to the doors, toggle it at least uh, two times, I think, and you should be able to get the bike. Well, moment of truth here coming up. So. Oh. It doesn't seem like they did it. Did they make a mistake, maybe? Yeah, it's it's probably a small mistake. Very unfortunate. However, it's very clear that they have the correct idea going here. So yeah. you know, uh, they will they will uh, they will have it uh, shortly. I think. Yeah, I think they accidentally expl exploded a bomb, and now they're uh, off by one, which is nothing new in this uh, this scene here. Yeah. So. Let's see them spawn a couple of more bombs. Yeah. Well, in the meanwhile, let's move over to... It seems like Ayu's Bing got a guest celebrate. Right. No, but they... Yeah, exactly. They had that uh, for, a, for a few minutes now, right? Um, but we have... It's interesting that we have now three of the teams having solved both uh, the maze, the platforms, the doors, and uh, yeah, working their way through the other challenges. It's gonna be fascinating to see if, uh, if the teams get stuck on the, the last uh, uh, pawnable challenge and if, uh, if I was being in Flat Network Society can actually keep up, if yes. they can catch up. And uh, we can actually look here at uh, Pastan. It seems they're now interacting with the game. Um, so could this be that they have like a solution? Uh, or are they Either just... a teammate that's actually doing the poning and the player is just bored and playing tic-tac-toe. <laughs> or they have a payload ready, an exploit, and they're setting up the, uh, the buffer overflow. Yes. So it looks like the Flat Network Society, yes, now they did get the doors. So very good of them. Um, oh, you could see there a small overlay thing when they hovered about, above an item. So it looks like they have some way of inspecting uh, different uh, entities and stuff. And now they're gonna explode all of this. Oh, I can see some really fast terminal action going on over at PPP. Uh, so is this, you know, this is probably them running their, their exploit, somehow relaying this into the terminal. And uh, is this the brute force? This could be the, the brute forcing uh, of the cookie, right? So uh, the way this, this works is that instead of having to brute uh, one big uh, 32 or 64 bit uh, value, you can do this byte by byte. So on average, you would need uh, 128 uh, different attempts per byte uh, for a total of um, 512 uh, different attempts to brute force uh, the cookie if it's a 32-bit or 1024 if it's a 64-bit. Uh, however, one of them, I think it's the first byte of the cookie will always be a null byte for to protect against another type of, of, of leaking. Um, but while they're doing that, we need to just check in with uh, I use Bing because it seems they as also they have also scored um, another flag. Um, so now we have three teams like tied at six flags. Very impressive. Yeah, just like we talked about that. The, uh, the last challenge is difficult enough for the other teams to be able to catch up. And it seems like Bing has now, is now tied uh, with PvP and Pustin for first place. Yeah. Uh, competing again, uh, for that 3k. Yeah. And you know But how... it seems like uh, PvP is making the, the most pro pro progress here. Although we don't know what's going with Pustin, if they're just playing the game or if they actually have players in the back end working on this. Yeah. I saw something stopped here. Um... Oh, it looks like something crashed and they just wrote why. That's 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 very unfortunate. It 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 might have been no. the case that they got the stack cookie, but something else broke. 
Oh yeah. Okay, so it seems like their their payload is not quite ready, but but you can see how fast they managed to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it's very on point that they have Sonic running around on their screen. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so it seems like they actually got a shell, but uh, it, it, then then the, then they. Uh... Yeah, I I don't think you will get a shell actually, or well, I, at least you don't need to, because there is a way to just call a function to basically print out the flag uh, for you. So I think that might be the issue. Yeah, so they they might just like need to uh, skip the, the the shell code and just go for uh, uh, printing out the flag directly. Yeah. So did we set this up so that you have to do the exploitation through the in-game uh, console? Will we, or could there be that one of the teams is like exploiting in the background? Uh, no, you have to interact with the game. That's okay. the whole point. That's that's very good because then we can see whenever there is progress, uh, because we would see this kind of behavior on screen from the teams, and yeah. uh, we'll see. I mean, I said previously that I thought that it would be this would be between PPP and Paston, but now with being at six flags, I might have to eat my words. So you know, very exciting to see this. And uh, the Flat Never Society only has uh, about three flags left to catch up. So, seeing as they're still struggling with these these payloads, there's still time. Yeah. And yeah. actually, if no one actually solves this challenge, uh, we actually go based on time. So where the the winner is gonna be the first team that submitted the sixth flag, and mm. then uh, so forth. Yeah. And that was PPP, right? Uh... That was PPP, correct? Yeah. Um, so we have Flat Network Society. They are just standing still at the moment. Uh, so probably doing some investigations off screen, trying to figure things out. Um, or they're building up triple fast nitro speed. That could also be the case. Um, we see some interaction. If we go over to Bing here, they've also started playing around with this tic-tac-toe game, trying to get an understanding of what's going on. Oh, some kind of overflow attempt going on there as well. Very interesting. So Bing is on on to the, uh, the point of the challenge, which is the buffer overflow. So they're on the right track track here. Mm -hmm. And we have the brute forcing going on again for PvP. Let's see if they fixed uh, their exploit this time. If that's the case, then we could see a flag dropping here. And that would be very exciting. Hmm. So definitely something to Oh did it No, it did not work. And it says I cry. Oh, this is this is nerve wracking. I mean So you know, they're still trying to pop a shell, which um they really shouldn't need to pop a shell. Oh, so do you, how do you, or where do you see this? Uh, do you think that they're... Um, I... So they're getting end of file errors in receive raw. Uh, that's from the... Python oh, right, yeah. They have. Mm. I think they're just trying to get one one line printed. We'll, we'll, we'll see what, uh, you know, what they manage. Um, but they're getting close. They're getting fairly close. Yeah, they are. They're they are able to, to like corrupt memory. They can, they can uh, control the instruction pointer. So that's already further than uh, some of the other teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, uh, you know, hopefully they will have it, or you know, hopefully it's not a small, simple mistake. That's bringing them down. Uh, that's a go up by one. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, but just uh, interesting to note uh, about like past and PVP. Um, they're both uh, standing on the terminal. It seems like. Uh, but actually, PPP brought the flag console with them because you can actually pick up flag consoles because of the bug from uh, match number three. Oh, that's so. If, that... if if they if they actually solve it like at the same time, uh, PPP is way closer to the flag console. Right, that's some good optimization. And uh, 
is the flag console located like far away from the because they uh, so we be, we should just explain this as well it's not enough to just submit your seventh flag you also have to make your way to the exit uh so uh bringing the flag console to you is uh, really nice because you can just quickly submit the flag and then just focus on getting out as quickly as possible yeah so the flag console is is um, above the exit but oh. it's still it's gonna save them a couple of seconds here yeah and and i mean we could be getting down to that kind of you know optimization and 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 how close the the contestants are i think we see flat network society they are yeah they just that's the yeah so they did the platform thing here right so they will just have to go there and drop so they seem to have figured out the uh the out of bounds jump for the uh yeah uh, platforming here yeah and they get the flag so they are about to score their fourth uh flag really nice and uh see them use their turbo fast speed no no more turbo fast speed uh, left for them so they'll have to walk yeah so that's uh and that's there really you nice. can see the flag console so that's the fourth flag in the in the bank for uh the flat network society uh, which only leaves uh, three more flags for them to find, and only two to actually catch up. Mm. Definitely. So, yeah. It's, uh... So in in um, in this tic tac toe game where you we're supposed to do uh, a buffer overflow exploit to uh, uh, get the flag, the only thing you need to do is actually to uh, jump to dump file, um, call flag uh, flag txt. Uh, with a simple Roth gadget, uh, the gadget is also ready. They do not have to construct it themselves. Mm. Uh, so there is actually no need for shell here. Yeah. But uh, uh, PvP might actually be on to that. So we'll, we'll see if this one works. Yeah. And we have confirmed with uh, our uh, staff that uh, there is no issue on our side. We have a test exploit uh, on this challenge, which is working and it was just tested. So... Uh, any, any, you know, uh, the reason that uh, PvP is not getting flag is because their exploit is not quite correct. And but it's always it's interesting to see when when you have an exploit and you're certain that it's supposed to work. <laughs> yeah. So you you start to uh, question the integrity of the challenge. Yeah, it's. Uh... Yeah, I, I mean, it it really shouldn't be like that, but unfortunately sometimes mistakes happen and you know maybe it was working in the test environment but there is a very slight difference in how the challenge is deployed or something like that which could break something and so uh, ideally uh as an organizer you always want to have test scripts um running against the live target if that's you know an option absolutely and you can see that Sonic is very angry that the payload is not working. Oh, yeah. Phew. Yes. Uh, so we would like to point out that... Oh, they got the flag. They got it. They got it. Oh, my God. Oh, no crash? No yeah. Crash. So you got a flag and a sec fault. Nice. Yeah. They... So now it's just to run to the exit. Go, go, go. Yeah, they submitted the flag and... They did it. Yep. And that's it. PPP is the winner of and... Hackcelerate. Uh, yes. Big congratulations to them. Uh, we seem to have some, some kind of bug with our own game in uh, in-game graphics here. Uh, but uh, the, the finishing time for them is at about 60 uh, minutes. So well done, uh, PPP. But 30 minutes to spare. That's a really good time there. Yeah. We still have. Oh, um, okay. We are, we are sleeping at the wheel here because while we were talking, uh, Flat Network Society has submitted not one, but two additional flags. So we have now three teams tied for 
um, the second place, uh, apart from the tiebreaker, of course. But yeah, it's the game is very much still on. So now, it's the, now, now we're trying to figure out who gets the 2K, the 1K, and the 500 bucks. Yes, exactly. Um, so, you know, very But, but it exciting. seems like in the, in the end game there, uh, PPP broke their plan somehow uh, to make the rendering be kind of weird, but it's fine. Oh, right. Oh, and uh, yeah, they are playing their uh, video from uh, Real World, I think, where PPP was, you know, uh, you know, scoring some flags. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, really impressive. 60 minutes and 45 seconds is the uh, official finishing time, according to the in-game uh, timer. Uh, I hope they're as excited right now. Yeah. And uh, let's check in with Flat Network Society. And uh... but that's really impressive that they managed to solve about two flags in how many minutes? Like five to ten minutes. Like that's impressive. Yeah. So they must have been working on these in parallel, uh, and you know they were just uh, getting them submitted, uh, you know, in very quick succession. So. And not only that, but they also managed to put one of their players in the background of the game, which is fascinating an interesting strategy to say the least yes uh it's always good it's always nice to see some of the players bring some personality into uh these games so um yeah it's gonna be interesting to see what's going on i think i see some uh let's switch over to paston here who seems to have some brute forcing action going on here so uh this could be going for a uh, second place so yeah and you'll notice that the brute forcing is not as quick as ppp's brute forcing so their tooling is not as snappy at sending these messages um so let's see if that will hinder them at all mm. so i'm i'm I'm, uh, I'm getting some messages that apparently the problem with the uh, um, the PPP is exploit. They had some like buffering issues, uh, which caused some some problems with their with their script, their exploit script. So yeah, it's. Uh... But still fascinating and really impressive that they they managed to get it with thirty minutes to spare. It's a great time to celebrate. Should be proud. Um, yeah, it's. Uh... It's going to be interesting to see if any of the other teams are going for, if we can see anything going on. Um, Pustin definitely has the, the stack canary brute force going. Yeah. But then, then it's a question of, do they know how to get the flag? Or are they going to make the same mistakes as PP did of, of trying to pop a shell, which is not going to work? Yeah. Or, uh, um, you know, if they have some... Uh, some other uh, issues like the buffering or something else. So we'll, we will see, uh, hopefully, or I mean, you know, hopefully for them, uh, this will this will give them the flag. It is, of course, a little bit tedious uh, to do this kind of uh, brute forcing. And uh, it's also, you can also get a little bit lucky because I mean, the stack canary is random. So depending on how you brute, brute force, uh, you can get a lower or higher value, uh, which you uh, brute force quicker or not. Um, Absolutely. And then just to reiterate the standings, we have uh, PPP in first place with uh, all flags uh, captured. Then we have Pustin with six flags. Uh, se second, uh, third place, we have IOS Bing with also six fat flags, but just on the heels of Pustin. And then we have the Flat Network Society also with six flags, um, but they they got there just after I was being. So those are our current standings and very exciting with uh, about 25 minutes left on the clock. Mm. Yeah, no, this is, uh, this is really tight. Uh, we have uh, Bing here with, oh, so what you saw there, if I if I saw this correctly, it looked like they pasted like Python like pwn tools code directly into the terminal. I wonder if that was that a mistake or have they also like integrated like a Python interpreter into the console uh, 
So I, I don't know, but uh, that that could have been. That cool. sounds more like a like a mistake to me. But mm. it would be really impressive if they can do like uh, uh, pawn tools interactions with within the game terminal. Yeah. So let's uh, switch over to Flat Network Society again, and uh, uh, I I would guess that one of one of their teammates is off screen trying to solve the actual uh, pawnable. And this is why their player is just like goofing around here. Uh, I would assume that this is the flag console they have brought uh, with them. So, yeah, that's uh, of course good. Absolutely. But I, I would rather like to see an Ida uh, session in the in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's um, just me. I I definitely agree. Uh, if we move over here to Paston again, we see uh, that they are doing some brute forcing again. Um, still not successful, but uh, you know we'll see if this uh, if it's gonna work this time around. So did they manage to actually grab the stack canary and execute something, or, or did it did it did it fail? Uh, looks like they are modifying their code a little bit now. Um, they're getting some Python also interesting, errors. Also, interesting why they're just doing this in like a, in a raffle, like instead of writing a file and like running it. Yeah, a bit, uh, you know, a bit hacky, but, uh, you know, if it works, it works. So Definitely working out for them. Well, that uh, remains to be seen, right? We uh, have not seen a flag quite yet. Yeah, and... but 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 it, it's it's interesting. But because we can, if you look at their terminal, you can see the binary dump every time they run uh, something. Right. Meaning that uh, they're actually resetting the connection to the challenge server every time because it, it's not supposed to um, dump the binary every time. Oh. That so they might actually never actually get the stack canary. Yeah, that would be an issue if they have kind of like misunderstood how the how the setup uh, works there. So I just want to quickly switch over to PPP, even though they finished. And I would like to point out that they had a custom Samic character uh, in the game. Uh, unfortunately, our updated uh, code with the... Uh, uh, the the color uh, different color characters depending on your team. Unfortunately, it broke their modification. But I think here we see a stream of like their local test uh, client. You can see in the corner there the the idle animation of their Sanic uh, character. Um, very it's very nice. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. Oh oh. Now it's running around quickly. And you saw the uh, checkpoint thing. But. As cool as that is, I want to now go over to I use Bing and look at this brute forcing here, going going yeah. fast. And as you noticed, uh, this is way faster than uh, what Paston was doing. Um, mm -hmm. And you also can see that the uh, the binary dump does not happen each time they send a new new line. Yes, so this is definitely the way to go. And here you see, uh, this is from inside an editor. Looks like debug output from uh pwn tools uh so this is network traffic in pwn tools with the debug uh flag uh set and uh, it's just showing all of these brute force and uh it's yeah it's 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 scrolling by pretty fast so you know uh, assuming the rest of their exploit note, yeah uh, if, if the exploit works then they're they're definitely in second place but interesting to note they're actually using visual studio code which is very on brand for i use bing right Perfect. it's uh um yeah but now it's a question of uh, what is their payload is it a uh, shell code or is it um jumping to the right prop gadget that we prepared for them yeah and uh is it um you know, let's see if they manage to avoid the same uh, thing that PPP seemed to have some kind of issue with buffering or um, whatever it was. So, uh, you know, let's see. Will they will they land the flag like this, or will they be disappointed and see nothing? So, 
remains to be will seen. they complain and ask us if the challenge is actually working like ppp did uh not throwing under someone under bus but uh, yeah <laughs> but but now it's actually going to be going to be interesting to see if the teams brought the flag console with them or if they'll have to run back yeah no that's uh that's great uh to you know if they if they uh did that also it would be interesting to see if that would make a difference like what if Paston and I use Bing uh, get this basically at the same time and the difference will just be uh, who brought the, f uh, the flag console with them. So, yeah. Absolutely. Because we see we, we see that they're brute forcing, although it seems like Paston is brute forcing in non-ideal or incorrect way. Yes, that could be an issue for them if this is in fact what's going on because you know this is what it's supposed to look like with um a brute force attempt very you know quick in quick succession without uh, all of that uh, garbage output uh, in between and this is in contrast with what we were seeing over here at uh, Paston, where you had this dump of the binary uh, coming out uh, all the time so uh, looks they have some some slight mistake in their in their exploit uh, there so it must be in the way that they're uh, hooking up to the terminal, it seems like. Yeah, that could definitely could be the case, that maybe they have to modify how that works. Um, yeah, we're just mixing it in with some Sanic is forever, and they spawn one of these uh, checkpoint things. Is that a real flag? Is that <laughs> their password? Maybe, maybe. Uh, we also see Flat Network Society again. Um, I guess still, still, uh, um, you know, waiting for a teammate, trying to figure out the exploit, uh, writing it all up, uh, getting it, getting it done. So, you know, hopefully they have good progress, but it's very difficult for us to see what's going on uh, off screen. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, but if we switch back to Bing here, we see this terminal relay thing again, which uh, is now not showing the red, but it's showing connect. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's a cool thing. I, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but you know, it looks cool. Yeah, it seems like they uh, they have a Chrome extension that just hooks right into the uh, the game itself, hmm. which is honestly a really really cool tooling. Yeah, so I'm just excited to see if we get if like uh, if this will work. The the brute forcing of the stack cookie here. And we actually had to uh, deploy the server. So in the previous matches, we just deployed the game servers, all the, uh, all the game servers in one uh, data center in the same location. Uh, but for this one, we actually had to um, spread out the servers and deploy the game servers close to where the teams are located to uh, since they were doing this brute forcing challenge and not to, to uh, so that they wouldn't have uh, too much of a disadvantage but depending on their location. Absolutely. And we're now just approaching the 15 minute, minute mark. Uh, so there are 15 minutes left. Yeah. That's uh, still, still some time to solve this, but uh, it's starting, you know, it's starting to get sweaty, I would say. Absolutely, it's a, it's a race for the 2K now. Mm, definitely. And did we see, oh, I see a flag there. Oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah. It seems like I use Bing is uh, jumping into second place. That's excellent. So will we see them back in the game? And they finish up and we just get that on screen. So we have, I use Bing scoring second place with a finishing time of 74 minutes and 41 seconds. Congratulations, well done. Beautiful. Wow. Only 15 minutes after PPP. Yeah. And they've, uh, they've solidified themselves in second place, getting their team 2K. And now it's a question of who is taking third. Yeah, will it be Paston or will it be the Flat Network Society? Both on six flags here. Um, 
We can see that Pestin has been working on their exploit for a while now. Hmm. Yeah. Still to no avail, and I think it might be due to the concerns that we've uh, we've mentioned uh, prior is that they're resetting the connection each time uh, that they're uh, inputting uh, their exploit. Yes, meaning that uh, the stack canary will yep. not be the same, and uh, they will be unable to actually figure out what it is. Yes. And here we can see with the Flat Network Society, here we see more of a traditional, uh, you know, what I would expect an exploit script to look like uh, using Python and Pwn tools in the left uh, pane. And you have the output in the right one, uh, you know, writing this together uh, and uh, trying it out locally, I would guess, uh, setting this uh, exploit up. So uh, I, you know, they could definitely be catching up to uh, Paston unless Paston figures out this little issue they have with their the connection and stuff. So yeah, it's uh, it's getting really tight. Yeah, it seems like uh, the Flat Network Society whipped up this uh, uh, this uh, exploit uh, script in no time. Mm -hmm. And it seems like they're installing Pwn tools. It's a great, great time to install Pwn tools, I think. <laughs> yeah, and uh... Uh, you can see uh, the ROP chain there in the like uh, roughly in the middle of the left side where you have your those uh, P64 uh, calls. So you have those three different addresses or like components of the ROP chain. Uh, they're building together the whole exploit there. You have first some padding characters, then the, uh, the the stack canary, and then some more padding, and then you have uh, the, the the ROP chain. So. Yeah, that's uh, it's like a very clean, very readable exploit. I really enjoy that when you can just you know take someone else's exploit and actually see what's going on because that is definitely not always the case, especially during a CTF when you're just trying to get something to work as quickly as possible. Absolutely, and it's a stark contrast to Pastin, which is again doing it in a raffle, which is very untraditional, in my opinion. Yes. However, now it does seem that they have figured out the uh, reconnection issue because this looks much more clean. So we see, uh, you know, one attempt at a time without the uh, binary being dumped in between. So, uh, you know, if they have this now, this could be uh, looking really good. Yeah, but but still, you can see uh, it's way slower than the the previous contenders we've seen. Mm, right. Uh, so, so interesting st interesting how Pustin has moved from being tied for first to now being tied for third yes and this is actually you know how, how this very interesting how this you can just swing around um, so and uh, it, it kind of highlights the um, the uh, the need for scripting here and good scripts good tooling um, what what is PvP doing here? Are they just like a <laughs> some some kind so of rewind a, going on? It's a re recording of some sort. Yeah, that's really cool. Like, I'm really like impressed to see how how quickly they managed to write this client and how cool it looks. Yeah. Maybe this is for like recording input to replay into the game and then like... Oh yeah. So... Like it seems like they, they could go forwards and then go backwards and then go down. Like that was... Yeah. And you had this little trace. Uh, so, okay. So I've been told that what they do is they... Uh, they slow down the ticks, as we talked about. They record stuff locally. And when they commit, they will send all of those ticks to the server. So that way they can kind of like play ahead and rewind uh, without really uh, dying uh, for real. That is a really cool uh, mechanic. That's like some kind of like an, an emergent behavior that we hadn't really thought about. Yeah. And then because uh, in the meantime, they're not sending ticks, so it means they can move extra fast mm. uh, when they actually commit. So that is really, really smart. Yes. And uh, we see some uh, um, brute forcing still going on here for past. So 
the issue might be that their connection to the server actually might just be that slow. That could be the case. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the connection in uh, like internet connections in Israel, for example, are not always uh, the best. Uh, and that's just, uh, you know, how it is in some some parts of the world have, uh, you know, better or worse internet connection, or at least uh, it's, you know, more or less uh, available to have good uh, internet connections. Um, that's you know. although it would not have made a difference because their 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 first exploit was wrong so yes it would not have made a difference for you know getting first or second place but it could still make a difference uh for third or fourth place so that would be very unfortunate um but yeah. uh, we'll we'll see so it depends if uh the flat network society can get their uh, exploit working here and uh Yep, yep. Within the next, uh, what, nine minutes, eight minutes now remaining? All right. Yes, we are down at like seven and a half minutes remaining, I guess. So that's, uh, it's tight. And uh, yeah, I'm not seeing that much difference yet in the Flat Network uh, Society's uh, script. So, yeah. Seems like they're doing local testing. Mm -hmm. But they they really should start trying to brute force it on the on the game machine. Yeah, we have some funky stuff going on here over at PPP screen again. Uh, not sure what this is. If this is some kind of like pathfinding testing uh, engine, or you know like a custom map or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. This seems some kind of like. Um, so it's apparently some kind of maze solver and pathfinding test engine. So this is really cool that they've built something like this. Um, yeah, so it seems like the, the yellow markers, the yellow circles are uh, like auto pathfinding markers. So those are like, if they click it, they can actually path their way to that uh, point. Oh, that's, that's really cool. Um, yeah. Looking over again at Paston, and you know, they are no longer brute forcing right now, so they're making some changes to the script, I guess. Yeah, and just to note if uh, neither of uh, the teams, Paston or the Flat Network Society, solves this challenge then purely based on time then we have a uh, pat past in a third place uh and then coming in uh, 12 minutes after uh after them is the flat network society in fourth place right so it's uh you know everything to everything to gain for the flat network society absolutely Especially coming in like so far from behind, like they had, uh, they had one or two flags when PP already had uh, six of them. Yeah, so that's and, a really great comeback. And 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 like, uh, you know, we were talking about how how Paston or PPP would win, and sure, PPP won, but then actually, I use Bing just came from, you know, from under and and managed to catch up and and score that second place. So it's been Absolutely. a super tight. Uh, match overall, I'd say. I was being managed to saw uh, saw about three challenges, sub submit three flags, uh, whilst the uh, PPP and Paston were on six flags trying to solve this tic tac toe challenge, which kind of demonstrates how tricky it is, and also the the time consuming factor of the brute forcing uh, the stack canary. Yeah. Which seems to be a hindrance for. Uh, for the Israeli team here, uh, Pastin. Hmm. So we can compare this to what's going on with Flat Network. They have, you know, a lot of local testing going on here, and uh, yeah, it's they have a a bunch of different versions of their script. I think um, it kind of looked like um, like they were trying to get this like into the game or something like this and uh, yeah it's um, a 
let's see what's going on. Will they start doing this now? Will they? No, they're still doing some local testing, I guess. So it seems like local testing, yeah. Still not quite there yet. But they're definitely getting close. We, we don't know if uh, Pasta has been doing local testing. I, I assume that they've been doing local te testing because otherwise I don't know how you do it. Yeah. Uh, but they've definitely been doing it off screen. Uh, whereas uh, the Flat Network Society is actually showing us the action, which is exactly what we want to see. Yeah. Um... So, Pustin's uh, approach here seems to be uh, not not the it's not the internet that's the issue it, here. It seems that uh, Pustin's problem is that they aren't. Uh, compensating for the lag, so they should just um, be sending 256 packets at the server and, and then like read the read the read back the response and not just write, wait, read, write, wait, read. So they should be sending um, um, a bulk of packages and then read the response um, at a later time instead of continually waiting for a response. So that's the that's the uh, the reason for the, the slowdown here. Yes. Um, so that's uh, actually a very interesting thing that we didn't really think about. Yeah. So um, how uh, will this um, how will this turn out in the end? Is is the big question here, right? But yeah, coming not up on the last two minutes. Uh, might uh, come to the conclusion that neither of them are going to submit it in time, which will place uh, Past in a third place and uh, the Flat Network Society in fourth place. So let's see if they can show us some last minute hacking. Yeah, really get down to the last second, get that final push in. Um, so, I mean, to be fair, as long as the Flat Network Society doesn't score anything, they still get that third place. Although, of course, it would be much nicer to just uh, being able to feel that, you know, you did complete all the challenges. So, Absolutely. These are all, like, very strong teams. Um, and, of course, these challenges are on the easier side, uh, being meant to speedrun them. So all of these teams are capable of, of solving these, uh, these challenges, but it's a question of... How quick do they have the right tooling? Do they have the right background knowledge, and can they pull it together in ninety minutes? Yes. So we now only have thirty seconds uh, left of the match, if the timer is correct, and I think it is. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be. Uh, I, I don't think any of the teams gonna be able to solve it now, unfortunately. So, this is. Interesting. Yeah, we have a small little um, prize uh, or like a celebration image from IU's Bing. I really like that. Uh, they did something similar when they won the qualification rounds, where they also drew like the other teams standing next to them being jealous and, and stuff. So, yeah. It's, it's very uh, fitting that they're using uh, MS Paint here. Oh, and uh, we have now officially ended the match, which means that, as we said, um, uh, we have our winners, PPP. In second place, we have I use Bing. Uh, third place, uh, Paston. And fourth place, the Flat Network Society. Well played, all of the teams. A really great job. And Absolutely with... phenomenal work here from every team here. You can see their uh, their scripts are amazing. The team members are doing uh, doing great, and even the artwork is uh, it's great work. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So um, yeah, with the match concluded, we will be now uh, throwing over to our panelists for some you know yeah, post match. Uh, closing remarks so uh you know thanks for listening to me and uh you know, and we uh you know hope uh, that we get to do this again at some point and that you will be watching so yes and now over to uh commentators uh sorry our panelists
Hey, so yeah, that was, um, you know, the, f the thing I thought that was funny about this, and I don't know if Julian would agree, but how it was, it came out of the gate really fast, and the first like, 20, 30 minutes, you could barely determine what was happening. And then all of the sudden, it kind of slowed down. Yeah, I was hardly surprised that the, the PPP and Passen were so tied up because I think it's the first time, like in the whole game, that we have such close team. Well, what do you think? Yeah, and we also had like a lot of lead changes too, right? Yeah, I think it was the best match so far. Like even commentating wise and game wise, challenge wise, we really improved a lot. Yeah, no, good. How do you feel about having the same thing next year? Yeah, I mean, this was definitely fun. I mean, you know, TV production is hard, but um, I think it all <laughs> came together really well and everybody uh, performed as a team and it was fun. I think it was really fun. I hope people will enjoy watching it as much as we had fun building it and commenting on it. Cool, all right. Well, thanks for everybody for participating and um, have a good one.